morning and welcome to WGTV Today. I'm Kim Best and it is Wednesday. March 26th already. Yes, Can you believe that? This month is almost over. Why? It's actually 27th. It is the 27th. It's the 27th. It? See, I can't keep up. <laughs> if I learned to count, that would help. Well, good Wednesday morning. Glad to have you on the show. It is the 27th. It is indeed. And thank you for being with us. And on today's program, we have, well, we have a couple of things for you here. Yes, we do. First of all, Paramount Theater, right? We do. We have some Sherry Archibald here talking about things happening at the Paramount Theater coming up this weekend. Also, uh, Mark's going to be with us from Parks and Recreation Department. That's right. He covers all kinds of fun things happening through the rest mm -hmm. of March and all of April. And the uh, Wayne County Red Cross has kicked off its Heroes Campaign. And last week I attended the uh, kickoff luncheon. And wow, is all I can say. We're going to have uh, a gentleman by the name of Dave Galloway on today. Mm -hmm. You're going to hear his story, and you're just not going to believe this story. This is an amazing story. And uh, I tell you what, I love the Red Cross. And, uh, and they this do is great one, things. They do. And this is one reason why. When you hear Dave's story, you're going to, you're going to really understand uh, how wonderful this organization is. That's All right. exactly right. That's exactly right. Let's see what else we have here. Well, if you're interested, because it's you know Easter this weekend, if you're looking at an Easter egg hunt for your little ones, we found one for you. There's one at Herman Park Center Thursday tomorrow from 6 till 9 p.m. It looks like. Well, that's a little late, but it does start at 6. <laughs> the time may not be right that it's over, but that it does man. start at 6 p.m. At Herman Park Center, it says, join the Goldsboro Parks and Rec for an Easter egg hunt, and the Easter Bunny's going to be there. It's for ages 4 to 8. Oh, okay. So at 6 o'clock is for ages 4 to 8. Then at 7.30, the older kids come, ages 9 to 12, and they're going to have a nighttime Easter egg hunt. And oh after boy. dark, it says, bring your flashlight. Oh, boy. That'll be really cool. Oh, boy. So everybody bring a basket. But the later group, the one that starts at 7.30, for you 9 to 12-year-olds, bring a flashlight, and you're going to have a really cool in-the-dark Easter egg hunt at Th Herman Park That's Center. right. So that's a flashlight case, and the other one's a basket case, right? Yeah, but they both need baskets. They're oh, both okay. basket cases. Oh, okay. <laughs> 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 okay. Birthdays today include Mariah Carey on the 27th of March. She's 42 years today, she is. Mariah Carey. A birthday today for Stacy Ferguson. She's known as Fergie. Was that a real name, Stacy? Apparently it is. Did not know that. Lead Did y'all know with, that? Lead singer with the Black Eyed Peas. Oh, we all know Fergie. Sure, she's 37 yeah. today. One <laughs> of my favorite actresses, and she's young. Uh-huh. And, and I didn't think young people could act. <laughs> really? Way I'm down. kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. But uh, Polly Perret is having a birthday. She is on NCIS. Yes. She plays uh, forensic specialist Abby, or Abs, Skiuto. And uh, right. she's 43 today, and boy, she, and you know, she went, she has her college degree in, uh -huh. in criminal forensics. Really? So that yeah. fits, fits, I fits can't even talk, perfectly. fits her perfectly. It does fits her perfectly. It does. <laughs> <laughs> Nathan Fillion, and I didn't know that was his real name, but on the TV show Castle. Yes, which I love, he watch Castle Richard, all the time. He's Richard Castle. Nathan Fillion, he's 41 years today. I didn't know that was his real name. Yeah, David Jansen, uh, uh, known best for The Fugitive back in the, in the 60s, uh, was born this day, 1931. Of course, he passed away 20, 30 years ago, 30 plus years. <laughs> uh, Sarah Vaughn, also, also deceased. Uh, she's uh, what an amazing talent. She was born this day, 1924. She died in 1990. Uh, Taylor Italian, I'm not sure that's how you say his name, but he is uh, uh, Jim and Cheryl's daughter, Ruby, or she is Jim and Cheryl's daughter, Ruby, on According to Jim. Oh, the yeah. TV show According okay. to Jim, uh -huh. uh, starring uh, Jim times. Belushi. Yeah, it's a great show. Very funny. But uh, she's uh, 17 today. And NASCAR legend, Cale Yarborough, you either loved him or you hated him. A lot of people <laughs> hated him. But anyway, he's 73 years today. Uh, and uh, well, I won't. I won't get into the story no. about the okay <laughs> about the fight. I won't. I won't get into that. But anyway, he's 73 years today, um, ranked in the top five upon his retirement. Anyway, uh, those are the birthdays for today. Happy, happy birthday! Happy, happy, joy, joy. That's right. All right. Let's uh, see. Coming up, Wayne, we have. Yes. It's called a pedal-driven bikeumentary. Oh. Instead of a documentary, it's a okay. bikeumentary. Bikeumentary. It's taking place this Thursday at yeah. 7 o'clock. Yeah. No cost at all. Yeah. It's uh, going to be at the Paramount Theater. You mean it's free? It's free. It's free? Yes. It's uh, through Goldsboro Parks and Rec Recreation. They're hosting it. It'll okay. be, like I said, 7 o'clock p.m. And okay. it talks all about 
how bikes and, and being on the green Greenway Pass and the various things you can do with your bikes yeah. can add so much to your life. It oh. gives you all kinds of details and it, and it shows a lot of video mm -hmm. um, of where it came from, how you can incorporate it in your community. So if you're interested in the Pedal Driven Bikeumentary, it's this Thursday, tomorrow night, 7 o'clock p.m., Paramount Theater, free of charge. They'd love to have you there. Okay. Today's trivia question. Yes. 1976 Chicago White Sox. Yes. Were nearly laughed off the baseball field when they walked on the field wearing what? Hmm. 1976. It's been a while back. A lot of people don't remember this. But people in Chicago do. When I'm they sure. went they went to this game in 1976, and I believe it was televised. <laughs> they walked on the field wearing what? It wasn't on this day. This is not a it was, yeah, it was during baseball day, season. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But they walked on the field and they were nearly laughed off the field when they were wearing playing this. wearing what? I have no idea, so I'll wait to hear. All right. Now, by the way, this <laughs> is not to be confused with what uh, Babe Ruth was wearing on his head back in earlier years. He used to stay cool in the heat playing baseball. He'd, he'd wear a cabbage leaf under his cap. Are you serious? Oh, he'd, put a, he'd wet a cabbage leaf and put it under his cap and wear it during the ball game. Stay well, cool. That is odd to say the least <laughs> but it worked hey anyway it works for you go for it this is not uh, this is not food of any kind the, the, the chicago white Sox wearing this on the field and they obviously on his head there. on their heads no 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 okay so not it's not necessarily like his was nope all right there nope. you go nope well i believe it might be time is for time? us to go to the paramount theater and the red cross and let's see what they've got to tell us that's happening in your community all right I am here with Mark Wilson with Parks and Recreation here at the Paramount Theater getting ready for something a little unique that we're bringing to the Paramount. We have been showing movies, kind of some old classic and holiday movies, but you guys are bringing something a little different for us here coming up on the 28th of March. We sure are. The, the movie is called Pedal Driven. It's actually a documentary um, about mountain biking and uh, we're looking forward to it at 7 p.m. here at the Paramount Theater um, and also an update we will have uh, free refreshments for anyone attending uh, the movie. Uh, we'll have free pizza and also beer um, that was donated from New Belgium Brewery. Uh, we'll have Fat Tire Beer. Oh, some really great sponsors for this event. Mm -hmm. And I like that you all are kind of making up your own words. Pretty unique. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> With the bikeumentary. That's great. <clears throat> um, tell us what's going to be uh, interesting for folks to see about a bikeumentary. What will draw them in for this? The really cool thing about this movie, um, and you can actually look at some clips that they have on their website. Uh, pedaldriven.org. Um, Hal, Hal at the Moon Productions is the name of the people that, that actually uh, produced the movie. By the way, I like that too. <clears throat> anyway, you can see some clips of the movie off their website and through YouTube. Um, it's basically about uh, how, how folks that are really into mountain bike riding, riding trails, work with the U.S. Uh, Forestry Service in, in developing mountain bike trails. And there's also some pretty cool uh, clips and shots there of, of folks ride on trails on some pretty cool jumps and everything. So it's not something that'll put you to sleep. It's a really good movie. I've good. watched it. Uh, yeah. Well, and speaking of riding trails, I think there are likely a lot more um, folks here, our citizens in Goldsboro, that are utilizing that than maybe we realize. Tell us about um, how that's being utilized here and where it happens and where folks can find out more about it. <clears throat> yeah, we actually have a mountain bike trail. I think the word's starting to get out now. The mountain bike trail is off of a Peach tr uh, Peachtree Street and Durant Street, which is just behind uh, Bicycle World. Mm -hmm. Uh, the How convenient? Shop. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's pretty convenient. You can go there, get a tune up, and then sh hop right uh -huh. out, out back. Um, but that's just off of Ash Street. And right now, I believe there's about two miles of tra trails there. And um, pretty much about once a month, folks get together and they work on clearing the trail and designing it. So it's, it's an ongoing process. But right now, it's, it's going really well. Very good. And is that, it's definitely, I mean, Parks and Rec gets into so many different yeah. avenues. They've just got so many things going on. And this is something that's probably, um, that you guys have started tagging mm -hmm. on to. So I think that's wonderful. And of course, being able to work with some of our local businesses, like Bicycle mm -hmm. World, and then we've got lots of great sponsors. Pizza Inn, I know, is going to be here for this event. 
So lots of wonderful refreshments. And what time do folks need to start arriving so that they are here, enjoy some, some cold beverages and some refreshments before they go into the theater? I'll get here you know, between 6.30, 6.45, and just kind of hang out, talk to folks here in, in your nice lobby um, before you go into the movie. Good. And the documentary, how long does that last? Um, it's, it's, it's about an hour long. Um, it's, like I say, it's, it's a really good film. And if, if folks also want to check out our bike trail, they can go to our Facebook page to see a lot of photos. And, and also on the city's YouTube page, um, there's some clips of, of like a rider's view of it that um, our local um, bike advocate uh, person, Mike, um, Mike Fritt, actually mm -hmm. did that. It's pretty cool. Good. And tell us some, um, let's share with our viewers the Facebook page and uh, website that they can go to see. Sure. It's facebook.com slash Goldsboro Parks and Rec. There are a lot of things on there to see. Lots of YouTube, lots of fun stuff, a lot of things happening right here with Parks and Recreation and uh, the City of Goldsboro. And we look forward to having you all here on March the 28th. Um, we would expect you to be here about 6.30 for the film to start at 7, only an hour. Great time for, um, to bring your family out. They'll be entertained. You'll have a bite to eat and have a good time. Yep. Good to have you here, Mark. Thank Thanks. you so Thank much. You much. We look forward to seeing you all here on March the 28th. Have you heard what's happening at Goldsboro Parks and Recreation? Well, let's find out. Today I have with me Mark Wilson to give us an update on what we can expect to happen in the next few weeks. Hey, Mark. Hey, how you doing? I am great. Great. Tell me what's been happening with Goldsboro Parks and Rec. We just finished up our first shad tournament, a fishing tournament, uh, on the Noose River, and it went really, really good. Uh, we had 94 uh, people fishing on the Noose River. 94, 94 fishing? That 94. is great. Yep, and um, <clears throat> they had all some ages. All ages. Uh, most were adults, but we had a few kids. Um, we had uh, Chris Mazingo, which uh, is, is funny. Um, Jeff Mazingo that works for Parks and Rec. It's uh -huh. his son that actually won for the uh, ages 12 and under. Really? Was the smallest uh, shad. So yep. you all gave out lots of different awards for various things. We sure did. We had some cash prizes, and we also had had a, a drawing for at the end for, for prizes. Wonderful. So I'm sure everybody had a great time. Had a really good time. Really good time. We want to thank Easy Bait and Tackle for letting us uh, yes. join in on the action this and year. And all the sponsors. There were quite a long list of local sponsors. Long that list. I didn't bring them with me, but there's a ton of oh, them. Oh, yes. Of them. Thank you to each and every one of you. You really made a difference. And, you know, fishing on the noose was great, and we appreciate what all you did to make it a success. Yeah, it's really good. Perfect weather, so that helped out mm -hmm. a lot. Yep. Absolutely. Look forward days. to maybe that again next year. Yep, next year. And had folks actually ask, asking us to do a uh, catfishing tournament on the river. So we may be doing that this summer. Okay, great. Well, what can we expect? I know you all have a long list of things happening. We sure do. Um, our next event coming up, we have our annual Easter egg hunt. We call it the Bunny Express. The Bunny Express. The Bunny Express, and that's going to be Thursday, March 28th. Um, okay. It's for ages 4 to 12. We have two different age groups for the Easter egg hunt. Mm -hmm. It'll be uh, from 4 to 8. Excuse me, ages 4 to 8 will be at 6 o'clock. Okay, ages 6 p.m. Yeah, 6 p.m. Ages 9 to 12 will be at 7.30 p.m. Now, where does this take place? This will be at Herman Park Center. We're going to do it on the front lawn. And um, for ages 9 to 12, they have to bring a flashlight because it'll be a flashlight egg hunt. Oh, yeah. so a, an evening in the dark We're looking for Easter eggs. Yep, we'll also have the Easter Bunny will be out there. And uh, you can take plenty of photos with the Easter Bunny. So what do people need to bring? Just their Easter basket? Easter basket, and bag, a flashlight and a flashlight. Yep. All right. Oh, that sounds like fun. Yeah, it's usually a good good turnout. Well, that Hopefully we'll have good, have good weather, too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How about that? That ought to be exciting for mm -hmm. those that have never participated in a uh, an evening Easter egg hunt. Yeah, it should be a lot of fun. Um, some other things we have coming up, we're going to do our annual river cleanup. Um, we do with Ari Jeffries each mm -hmm. year. That's going to be April 6th. Um, and this year, we're also adding the Friends of Wayne County Greenways. They're going to come along and help us as well. So tell me what that is, and if somebody wanted to participate, how would they volunteer for that? Um, just give us a call at 739-7480. Uh, and um, <clears throat> what we do is we, we borrow some canoes from the Noose River Keepers and some other organizations. And um, we go out on a stretch of the Noose River. We paddle along, and as we, you know, see trash on, on a log or some, something like that, we go and pick up the trash, put it in a trash bag. End of the day, we'll have a lunch, and 
we'll, we'll take the trash to the local landfill, have it weighed to see how much trash we picked up. Oh, wow. We'll, we'll report that in to uh, the Noose River Keepers so each each year they can compile on their big cleanup day right. how much trash was picked up off the Noose River. So definitely volunteers giving mm -hmm. back to the community and keeping our river something we can be very proud of, exactly. keeping it clean and, exactly. and doing their part. Well, that, that is fun, yeah, it's, but it's yet really it's fun. also yeah. very constructive and sure you're giving is. back. Mm -hmm. We had great weather last year. Hopefully we'll have great weather again. Well, you guys take better. lots of pictures and we'll make sure we post those Absolutely. on the city's Absolutely. Facebook page and, let, and, and the Parks and Rec Facebook page and let people continue to see what's happening. Great, Maybe we yeah. need to do a little video of it. That'd be good too. <laughs> we might put the, uh, the go cam on. And yeah, that would be great. That would be great. So that's a new group that's participating with you all is the mm -hmm. Friends of? Friends of Wayne County Greenways. Right, and thank you to R.A. Jeffries for yes. sponsoring this event mm -hmm. one more time. Yep, and actually the, the day after that is our uh, kickoff for the Sunday in the Park series. Um, it is time for Sunday time. in the Park at Urban Park again. Yeah, we did it last year, had some good success with that um, with the uh, the Arts Council here in Wayne County. Yes, yes. And um, we're, we're also going to team up together for this one as well. And uh, the first one, obviously, Sunday, April 7th from 2 to 5 p.m. And uh, we'll have pretty much the same as last year, a bunch of art vendors. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll have food. We'll have the Kiwanis miniature train going. Um, we'll have some other activities like mural painting uh, for the kids to join in on. <coughs> we'll also have uh, planting uh, tomato seeds in a little cup with soil so the kids can take home oh, and grow yeah, tomato plants. Oh, yeah, they can plant. experience yeah. gardening. And our music for this, uh, this event will be Caleb Elder. I'm not sure if you're familiar with uh, the show The Voice. It's yes. kind of like American uh -huh, Idol. Well, he was He was actually a contestant on that show. Okay. Yep, so we're excited. That to, is to nice that he's coming to Goldsboro. Yeah, absolutely. So now tell us how the Sunday in the Park works. How often will you have these? And, and tell us a little bit about how the setup is during that day. Like, do you have a different entertainer every Sunday? or And how many Sundays is it? We do. We do have a, a different uh, musician for each Sunday. Um, <coughs> Last year we ran it from, I believe it was May through September. Mm -hmm. um, didn't have a good turnout in, in the dog days of the summer during July and August. So, so, hot. so we're starting a little bit earlier. We're going to skip July and August mm -hmm. and actually have it a little bit later. We're going to end it in October. Wonderful. So April through October minus July and August. <laughs> It'll be the first Sunday each month. And Perfect. it's free. Bring the whole family out. Um, we have Herman uh, the street there lined mm -hmm. up with all the booths and uh, the gazebo will be the musicians. Um, of course, we had the playground. Kids can play on the oh, playground. Yeah, so Sunday in the park. Sunday in the park. And they can look for that information mm -hmm. on the city's website and up on Parks and Rec's website as well right. to continue to, if you want to see who's actually playing and entertaining each Sunday yep, and make sure you know the dates and the times the schedule will be there. Yep. And we we'll also could be a pickup soccer game going on. We have uh, two new soccer fields at Herman Park just behind the gazebo on the bit large grass area. Because um, <coughs> we have our first soccer league, we had a couple teams this year for soccer. And we'd like to thank the Kiwanis Club for donating soccer goals. And, yes, and they'll be up shortly. Yes, that's a great addition to Herman Park. Yeah. Now, who, what ages and who can play? Uh, we start at age four and end at age eight. So it's four to six and then seven and eight year olds. Do they call Parks and Recs to sign up, I would assume? Absolutely, Parks and Recreation to sign up. That is great. You are all just adding and continuing to build on what Parks and Recs offers. Absolutely. We're trying to make and offer a lot more. That's right. That's right. Well, thank you so much, Mark, for being here today and promoting all the things that are happening right here in the city and in our community. And Parks and Recs is just such a great um, participant in our community. And we appreciate what you guys do and what you provide thank to each you. and every one yeah, of us. Yeah, we love doing it, too. It's fun for us. And you can tell. Yeah. You can tell. You have a good time. Well, thank you so much for listening. And that's what's happening at Goldsboro Parks and Recreation. Good morning and welcome to WGTV Today. I'm Kim Best and it is Wednesday. March 26th already. Yes, Can you believe that? This month is almost over. Why? It's actually 27th. It is the 27th. It's the 27th. It? See, I can't keep up. <laughs> if I learned to count, that would help. Well, good Wednesday morning. Glad to have you on the show. It is the 27th. It is indeed. And thank you for being with us. And on today's program, we have, well, we have a couple of things for you here. Yes, we do. First of all, Paramount Theater, right? We do. We have some, Sherry Archibald here talking about things happening at the Paramount Theater coming up this weekend. Also, uh, Mark's going to be with us from Parks and Recreation Department. That's right. He covers all kinds of fun things happening through the rest mm -hmm. of March and all of April. And the uh, Wayne County Red Cross has kicked off its Heroes Campaign. And last week I attended the uh, kickoff luncheon 
and wow is all I can say. We're going to have uh, a gentleman by the name of Dave Galloway on today. Mm -hmm. You're going to hear his story, and you're just not going to believe this story. This is an amazing story. And uh, I tell you what, I love the Red Cross, and, uh, and they this do is great one, things. They do, and this is one reason why. When you hear Dave's story, you're going to you're going to really understand uh, how wonderful this organization is. That's All right, exactly right. That's exactly right. Let's see what else we have here. Well, if you're interested, because it's you know Easter this weekend, if you're looking at an Easter egg hunt for your little ones, we found one for you. There's one at Herman Park Center Thursday tomorrow from six till nine p.m. It looks like. That's a little late, but it does start at 6. <laughs> the time may not be right that it's over, but that it does man. start at 6 p.m. at Herman Park Center. It says, join the Goldsboro Parks and Rec for an Easter egg hunt, and the Easter Bunny's going to be there. It's for ages 4 to 8. <coughs> oh, okay. So at 6 o'clock is for ages 4 to 8. Then at 7.30, the older kids come, ages 9 to 12, and they're going to have a nighttime Easter egg hunt. And oh after boy. dark, it says, bring your flashlight. Oh, boy. That'll be really cool. Oh, boy. So everybody bring a basket, but the later group, the one that starts at 7.30 for you 9 to 12 year olds, bring a flashlight and you're going to have a really cool in the dark Easter egg hunt at Herman Park That's Center. right. So that's a flashlight case and the other one's a basket case, right? Yeah, but they both need baskets. They're oh, both okay. basket cases. Oh, okay. <laughs> 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 okay. Birthdays today include Mariah Carey on the 27th of March. She's 42 years today, she is. Mariah Carey. A birthday today for Stacy Ferguson. She's known as Fergie. Is that a real name, Stacy? Apparently it is. Did not know that. Lead Did y'all know that? Lead singer with the Black Eyed Peas. Oh, we all know Fergie. Sure, she's 37 yeah. today. One <laughs> of my favorite actresses, and she's young. Uh-huh. And, and I didn't think young people could act. <laughs> really? Way I'm down. kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. But uh, Polly Perret is having a birthday. She is on NCIS. Yes. She plays uh, forensic specialist Abby, or Abs, Skiuto. And uh, right. she's 43 today, and boy, she, and you know, she went, she has her college degree in, uh -huh. in criminal forensics. Really? So that yeah. fits, fits, I fits can't even talk, perfectly. fits her perfectly. It does fits her perfectly. It does. <laughs> <laughs> Nathan Fillion, and I didn't know that was his real name, but on the TV show Castle. Yes, which I love, he watch Castle Richard, all the time. He's Richard Castle. Nathan Fillion, he's 41 years today. I didn't know that was his real name. Yeah, David Jansen, uh, uh, known best for The Fugitive back in the, in the 60s, uh, was born this day, 1931. Of course, he passed away 20, 30 years ago, 30 plus years. <laughs> uh, Sarah Vaughn, also, also deceased. Uh, she's uh, what an amazing talent. She was born this day, 1924. She died in 1990. Uh, Taylor Italian, I'm not sure that's how you say his name, but he is uh, uh, Jim and Cheryl's daughter, Ruby, or she is Jim and Cheryl's daughter, Ruby, on According to Jim. Oh, the yeah. TV show According okay. to Jim, uh -huh. uh, starring uh, Jim times. Belushi. Yeah, it's a great show. Very funny. But uh, she's uh, 17 today. And NASCAR legend, Cale Yarborough, you either loved him or you hated him. A lot of people <laughs> hated him. But anyway, he's 73 years today. Uh, and uh, well, I won't. I won't get into the story no. about the, the okay <laughs> about the fight. I won't. I won't get into that. But anyway, he's 73 years today, um, ranked in the top five upon his retirement. Anyway, uh, those are the birthdays for today. Happy, happy birthday! Happy, happy, joy, joy. That's right. All right. Let's uh, see. Coming up, Wayne, we have. Yes. It's called a pedal-driven bikeumentary. Oh. Instead of a documentary, it's a okay. bikeumentary. A bikeumentary. It's taking place this Thursday at yeah. 7 o'clock. Yeah. No cost at all. Yeah. It's uh, going to be at the Paramount Theater. You mean it's free? It's free. It's free? Yes. It's uh, through Goldsboro Parks and Rec Recreation. They're hosting it. It'll okay. be, like I said, 7 o'clock p.m. And okay. it talks all about how bikes and, and being on the green Greenway Pass and the various things you can do with your bikes yeah. can add so much to your life. It oh. gives you all kinds of details, and it, and it shows a lot of video mm -hmm. um, of where it came from, how you can incorporate it in your community. So if you're interested in the pedal-driven bikeumentary, it's this Thursday, tomorrow night, 7 o'clock p.m., Paramount Theater, free of charge. They'd love to have you there. Okay. Today's trivia question. Yes. 1976 Chicago White Sox. Yes. Were nearly laughed off the baseball field when they walked on the field wearing what? 1976. It's been a while back. A lot of people don't remember this, but people in Chicago do. When I'm they sure. went, they went to this game in 1976, and I believe it was televised. <laughs> they walked on the field wearing what? 
it wasn't on this day. This is not a. It was, yeah, it was not during baseball season. Mm -hmm. yeah. But they walked on the field and they were nearly laughed off the field when they were wearing playing this. wearing what? I have no idea, so I'll wait to hear. All right. Now, by the way, this is not <laughs> to be confused with what uh, Babe Ruth was wearing on his head back in earlier years. He used to stay cool in the heat playing baseball. He'd, he'd wear a cabbage leaf under his cap. Are you serious? Oh, he'd, put a, he'd wet a cabbage leaf and put it under his cap and wear it during the ball game. Stay well, that cool. is odd, to say the least. <laughs> but it worked. Hey, anyway, if it works for you, go for it. This is not, uh, <laughs> this is not food of any kind. The, the, the Chicago White Sox wearing this on the field. And they Obviously on his head, them. on their heads. No. No? No. Okay, so not it's not necessarily heads. like his was. Nope. All right, there nope. you go. Nope. Well, I believe it might be time Is for us time? to go to the Paramount Theater and the Red Cross, and let's see what they've got to tell us that's happening in your community. All right. So now I have the honor of introducing someone who wants to tell you about his heroes. Dave Galloway has been a resident of this area since arriving at Seymour Johnson Air Force Base in 1981. He retired as a Master Sergeant in 1994. He subsequently went to work with the North Carolina Motorcycle Safety Program and became its State Director. He served in that position until he had an accident in 2006. He retired from the state and now spends his time working a few part-time jobs and volunteering, including as a treasurer, as the treasurer of the Sunrise Kiwanis Club, a patient family advisor for Vidant Medical Health in Greenville, an income tax preparer on the base, a spin class instructor for the family Y, and the president of Seaboro Cyclist Motorcycle, I'm sorry, bicycle, different kind of bike. Bicycle Club here in Goldsboro, and he's married to Kay and has a son and two daughters, and he swears he has the six cutest grandchildren in the world. So I welcome Dave Galloway to share his story with us. Thank you so much. I am truly, truly honored to stand before you today. The Red Cross's mission, part of its mission, and just a small part, is to collect blood. But that is such an important function, especially to people like me. I'm going to tell my story in a moment, but first I have many parties I'd like to acknowledge. First and foremost is my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Additionally, I had many friends and family members praying for my recovery and supporting me along the way. How about all the doctors, nurses, therapists, and other medical personnel at Viden and here in Goldsboro as I went through my, my recuperation, my surgeries, and everything I went through to get back on my feet. And let's not forget all of those unsung heroes and those are the folks who donate blood to the Red Cross and helped in a large part to save my life the day that I had my accident. I may be preaching to the choir with, audience, with this audience because I know a lot of you probably already are donors, so what I would ask is that you carry my story back out into the community, perhaps tell it to your friends and neighbors who aren't donors, and maybe we can uh, turn them over and have them begin donating blood as well. I want to start my story by taking you back to Wednesday evening, December 13th, 2006. My daughter Becky had come to visit and she had her two little boys with her, Gabe and Caleb. They were ages uh, five and three. And I always loved seeing these little guys when they came to visit. I also had a granddaughter at the time who was just one year old. Uh, but I, I played with the guys like I always did. And when it was time for them to leave, I did, my, I did my normal routine. I threw uh, three-year-old three Caleb up with one of my shoulders and carried him out to his car. And of course, on the way, I stumbled and pretended I was going to drop him. And he laughed and giggled. And I put him in his car seat. And I went back in the house. And I did the same thing with five-year-old Gabriel. Threw him up on my shoulders, carried him out to the car, kept threatening to fall and hurt him and all that stuff. And he giggled and laughed. And, as I was strapping Gabe into his car seat, I said, you guys are both getting so big, what in the world is Pap-Pap ever gonna do when I can't carry you anymore? 
Without missing a beat, Gabe replied, Pap, when you can't carry us, we'll carry you. Little did I know what was about to happen the very next day and how these words that Gabe mentioned would come back to me. I was 55 years old in perfect health with a perfect life. My wife Kay and I had been married for 35 years. We had raised three great children to adulthood without too many problems. All were married, employed, and not living at home. <laughs> That's something we don't see too often these days. They had also blessed me at the time with three beautiful grandchildren, Gabe, Caleb, and Abby. I was a dedicated husband, father, and pap pap. I had retired from the Air Force in 1994 and was working as the state director of the motorcycle safety program. I was an avid motorcyclist and bicyclist. I'd been riding bicycles recreationally and competitively for over 20 years and had amassed, uh, amassed more than 110,000 miles on a bicycle in that time. I was as healthy as a horse. On December 14th of 2006, I went out for a ride and the ride changed my life forever. I was working in Snow Hill and I always spent my lunch hour riding a 15 mile loop uh, around the area of Snow Hill, Araba Institute, and those areas. Uh, I'd been doing it for a long time, just about every day on my lunch hour, just to stay in shape and keep from eating too much food. On this particular day though, as I neared the end of my ride, an automobile came around a corner. He was in a left-hand curve. He crossed over the center line, came all the way into my lane, and hit me head on. Police estimated the combined impact at 60 miles per hour. A man in a nearby house heard the collision and called 911. The local EMS was quick to respond and they immediately contacted the helicopter out of Pitt Memorial Hospital. While I have no memory of the accident, I'm told I was awake and alert at the scene. I kept trying to stand up, which would have been physically impossible due to the nature of my injuries. But I did ask a bystander to please call my coworkers and tell them I was gonna be just a little bit late coming back from lunch. <laughs> Apparently in my state of shock, I had no idea of the seriousness of my injuries. I spent $9,000 for a ride in a helicopter that I don't even remember. By the time the chopper sat down at Pitt Memorial, which is now Vidant Medical Center, by the way, I'd fallen into critical condition with many broken bones, internal injuries, and severe internal bleeding. My hospital records indicate the doctors went through 33 units of blood before they could get the bleeding stopped in my pelvic area. Think about that, 33 units. Let me step away from my story for just a moment to put emphasis on that. I would not stand, be standing before you today if it weren't for the Red Cross and all of their efforts to collect blood. Imagine Vidant running out of blood after they had used 10 units, 15 units, 20 units. If that had happened, I wouldn't be here. My life depended completely on an adequate supply of blood, and I had the Red Cross and all of those donors to thank for this. Back to my story, the doctors told my family that they were gonna go from minute to minute as they considered my chances for survival. I had suffered an open book pelvic fracture, which in and of itself is fatal in about 50% of its occurrences, without any other injuries. But I also suffered, both legs were broken. I broke the L4 vertebrae in my back. I shattered my right knee. I broke five ribs, and I broke all of the bones in my left arm, elbow, wrist, hand and fingers. Over the following month, I coded once, my lungs collapsed, I developed pneumonia two times, developed renal failure, required a tracheotomy and breathing tube, chest tubes, and many other medical problems. At one point, my body swelled so badly that doctors performed an open abdomen procedure in which they cut me open and removed my intestines they lay them gently on the external part of my body, wrap them in saran wrap, I don't know. Uh, but they had to do that because the swelling in my body uh, could have caused my other internal organs to, uh, to shut down. 
I spent a month in the ICU in a drug-induced coma and have no recollection of that time except for a few weird dreams that have come back to me. I awoke to my lovely wife Kay standing beside the bed holding my hand and crying. She explained what had happened and I had a hard time believing her. I had no recollection of the accident. Those next few days were very foggy, but I kept asking for my kids and my grandchildren. I don't know why it was important for me to see them. Uh, they did come and visit, and after that, it just seemed to put my mind at rest. Now I was ready to get well again. Uh, from that point forward, my family and my friends all played such a huge role in my recovery, but especially those three little grandchildren. Uh, what an inspiration to sur survive and get better. I have to tell you at this point, I had a lot of external fixators. I don't know how many of you are familiar with them, but they're, they're metal rods that are on the outside of your body that are drilled into your bones that hold, uh, they hold your bones in place as they heal. And uh, Gabe and Caleb thought it was so cool, they thought I was Robo-Man. So I didn't feel like Robo-Man, but they thought I was. So that's what was important. When I was released from the ICU and the trach tube removed, I was transferred to Life Care, which is an acute respiratory hospital in Rocky Mount. I spent a month there, and after that stay, they moved me back to Viden for six weeks in the inpatient therapy unit. There they taught me such things as how to use the slide board to get in and out of bed, to my wheelchair, to the toilet. Any place I had to move had to be done using this uh, wooden sliding board. They also taught me how to function using my left arm and my right leg, because at that point, uh, there wasn't a whole lot of help for my left arm or my, I'm sorry, they taught me to use my right arm and my left leg. <laughs> my, le my left arm and my right leg were pretty, were pretty well uh, beat up at that point. Anyhow, uh, after three and a half months in the hospital, I returned home, and boy, what a glorious day that was. I was so happy to get home. I was in a wheelchair, not knowing what my future would hold, Doctors doubted that I would ever walk again due to the seriousness of my broken pelvis and legs. They had told me for certain that I would never ride a bicycle again. Since my initial hospitalization, I've been back in 15 times for follow-up surgeries to include left hip replacement, left elbow replacement, plates and screws inserted and removed from a lot of my different bones, abdominal surgeries, and infections. Several of my surgeries, again, required additional blood. Thank you again, Red Cross. I remember in particular receiving a unit of blood after my hip replacement, and uh, for some reason that one stands out in my mind. That, that unit really perked me up, and I'm wondering now if maybe it came from Lance Armstrong. Um, nobody's here to drug test me, are they? Uh, <laughs> Needless to say, I've learned to walk again. I have a little trouble with steps, but I have learned to walk again fairly well, and I'm happy to report that I'm back on my uh, bicycle again as well, much to my wife's dismay. She was not very happy about that at all. Since getting back on a bike about four years ago, I've ridden more than 10,000 miles. Over the years, the doctors have slowly, piece by piece, been putting me back together. But it hasn't been easy, and I certainly haven't traveled this journey by myself. I could just as easily have fallen into a state of depression, still be rolling around in that wheelchair feeling sorry for myself and expecting everybody to wait on me. But somehow I found an inner strength and determination to help me deal with my situation. Many people praise me for my determination to get well, but trust me, that was a two-way street. And I credit God, friends, family, medical staff, and how about all those unsung heroes, the folks who donate blood to the Red Cross? How can I ever thank them? Without an adequate supply of blood, again, I'd never be able to stand here in front of you today and tell my story. Six years later, my life is back to normal, though I have a new definition of normal. My injuries continue to plague me. I've been unable to go back to work in a full-time capacity. I take a lot of pain pills. And every few months, it seems like I'm back in the hospital for another follow-up surgery to fix something that's still broken from the accident. I'm still attending physical therapy after six years. As a matter of fact, I need to leave here shortly to attend therapy again. But the good news is that through all of that, my family has grown by three additional grandchildren, 
since, since my accident. Three beautiful little boys that I almost never had a chance to love and spoil. Isn't that wonderful? I want to take you back now to the beginning of my story where I talked about putting Gabe and Caleb up on my shoulders and carrying them out to the car. One day, about three months after my accident, while I was still in the hospital in the therapy department, Becky came to visit and brought the little guys with her. They offered to wheel me in my wheelchair down to the cafeteria to get a cup of coffee. Uh, just as we left my room, all of a sudden, Gabe and Caleb were in the middle of the biggest cat fight you've ever seen, right there in the middle of the floor of the hallway. I mean, they were gouging, scraping, screaming, hollering. Poor Becky's having a fit. I'm just sitting there watching them and chuckling. But what do you suppose they were fighting about? They were fighting over which one of them got to push the wheelchair. Don't you suppose there's a special place in my heart for those little guys? In closing, I want to say that I believe everything happens in this life for a reason. I truly believe this. And though physically I'm nowhere near where I used to be, I am a better person because of my accident. To each of you I would say, please carry my story out to the public and use it as a sales tool for the Red Cross. Encourage everyone you know to donate, to donate blood. Speaking from experience, I can tell you that we don't know from one minute to the next what's about to happen. It could happen to one of us leaving the parking lot today. It could be any one of you tomorrow or in the next week or the next month who's been injured in an accident and you'll be depending on an adequate blood supply. Donating is not hard or painful. It's a slight pinch when they insert the needle, maybe a little bit of dizziness when it's over with, and then it's all over with. So please go out and encourage your neighbors and your friends to donate blood. It's, it's so important and, and it's something I never thought about uh, before my accident. I mean, I donated, but I never, I never had an inkling of how important it could be in my life. So thank you all for listening today, and God bless each and every one of you. And we're back on WGTV today. I tell you, that, uh, that story uh, by Dave Galloway, very touching story. He's, uh, he's, he's very fortunate. He's a very fortunate man, and uh, it just goes, it just says so much about what our Red Cross does here locally. That's only one example of the many lives they save, many uh, uh, people they help in so many different ways. Mm -hmm. So well, please anytime they have the, have the Heroes campaign, it is so heartwarming because it you is. will hear many stories that are of people that you know right here in our community and the things that they and their family have been through. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. Yeah. So when someone comes to you and says, you know, I'm with the Red Cross, would you give to the Red Cross, whether it's blood or whether it's a, a monetary contribution, please do so. And if or you don't volunteering have your time. Or volunteer your time. That's exactly right. I uh, heard from uh, Melissa over at the uh, uh, public library here the other day, and she mm -hmm. wanted me to remind you about due to maintenance on a building. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see, day's 27th, right? Yes. Okay, uh -huh. today's the 27th. Today, the Pikeville Library is closed today. Okay. Uh, the Fremont Library will be kind of taking up the slack uh, and open extended hours uh, this afternoon. The Fremont Library opened from 9 this morning until 1 this afternoon and from uh, 2 until 6 uh, later on in the afternoon. So uh, uh, Pikeville is, uh, Library is closed today due to maintenance work being done. It's good to know. Oh, yeah. Oh, we want to remind you, if you've not heard of the Young Professionals Group here in our community, this is a, a young group, or it's a, it's a group of young people in our community. This is all through the Chamber of Commerce, and they get together and do many things, from working together on community service projects to getting together and just getting to know one another and, and team building for youth in our community. Uh, I'm not sure of the ages. I can't remember exactly how young you can be. Oh, I think it's young. 21. That's young. And I think it goes to 40. That's young. But I'm not sure of the ages, but you can go on the Chamber of Commerce's website and find out. But they're having something called a morning rush on April the 4th at 7.30 in the morning. It's very similar to business after hours, but it's kind of like a business for four hours oh. for those people who maybe can't make the afternoon meetings. Must be a young thing. Must be. Yeah. But if you're interested in finding out more about Young Professionals Group or the Morning Rush, you can visit the Chamber of Commerce's website, find out details there, 
and the chamber is also having a Dancing with the Wayne County Stars coming up oh, April yeah. 19th. We've talked about yeah. it several times. How about that? We all know many of the people that are, I believe it's 16 stars they have? 15 or 16, yeah, yeah. a bunch of people involved. A here. long list of people that work yeah. all over our community that yeah. are, are dancing and it's all benefiting. A list of long people? I mean, a <laughs> uh, uh, long list of people. Yes, yeah, and is. all that, that's what I meant to say. It all goes back to benefit the Wayne Education Network. It's going to be taking place soon at the Paramount Theater, April 19th. So if you have not gotten your ticket or made a donation, you can do that on the online. Oh, boy. That's right. Oh, boy. Today's trivia question is, back in 1976, Chicago White Sox took to the field for a baseball game. They did, and when they did, fans erupted in laughter. What made them laugh? Well, it was something that they were wearing. Any idea what it might have been? Take a wild guess and say they wore... I don't know, some kind of different sock. Not so much. That's a good, that's a good answer. But it's not right. <laughs> that's they okay. wore Bermuda shorts. Really? Baseball. And Bermuda shorts don't go together. S sliding into home plate doesn't work. Yeah. No. Anyway, they, don't, they didn't do that again. I bet not. <laughs> I bet not. Again. Oh, wow. Anyway. Don't forget, tomorrow night is the Easter egg hunt. If you have not gotten anything lined up for your kids at... Goldsboro Parks and Recreation. The younger kids, four to eight, can go at six o'clock, bring your basket. The older kids, nine to 12, can go at 7.30, bring your basket, but also bring a flashlight, because your Easter egg hunt will be in the dark. Follow that cab. <laughs> Follow that cab. Police in Salisbury, Maryland, report a bank robber used a taxi as his getaway car. Seems police say a man took a cab to a PNC bank branch, and he told the, the driver of the cab to wait. Don't pull off, I'll be right back, you know what I mean? So, well, officers say he then told a bank employee he had a gun. He didn't show the weapon, but he said he had one. He left in the waiting taxi, took the money and ran uh, to the cab, and then the cab drove off. Investigators determined where the taxi had picked up the suspect. Uh, they made the arrest. Uh, Gary Allen Mitchell now faces uh, armed robbery and other charges. You would think if he was going to rob a bank, he would at least have his own car. Get it all set up or without a, a bicycle cab. or a little motorcycle or something. No, he decided he because wanted to. Because he could cab. go really fast on a bike. Yeah. In that traffic, sure. <laughs> wow. All right. Not Smart very Smart thinkers. Yeah, right. Yep. Okay. What else do we have here? Well, let's see. The Family Y. We've talked about it before. They've got their 15th annual golf tournament coming up. We've had several come and talk about their golf tournament mm -hmm. and promoting that. Their slogan is, We Build People. And they do. And the golf tournament, oh, excuse me, the golf tournament is, let's see, April 18th, Walnut Creek Country Club. Right, okay. And you've talked about before what all that $400, which was what it cost to have a team of four. What does that include? A team of four. I'm glad you asked that. And I get to read it right here. Yes, you right do. here, right here. It, you get, uh, it includes a lunch and dinner. Lunch and dinner the day of the event. Cart fees, green fees, goodie bags, beverages, snacks on the course, and a whole bunch of other stuff, plus a lot of good time. Yeah, coming a lot up of soon, good fun. April 18th, yeah. for the scholarships is what all the funds go back for, scholarships at the Family Y, exactly so anybody right. can attend. If you're interested, call Cricket Davis at 778-8557. That's right. You know, every year, North Carolinians lose millions and millions of dollars to consumer scams, including I'm not surprised. scams associated with sweepstakes, with charities, and with home repair. Consumers, especially seniors, are often victimized by telemarketing fraud, and identity theft, and that remains a growing problem. North Carolina Attorney General's office handling more than 15,000 complaints. Wow, 15,000. Each 000. year, 15,000 complaints a year. You break that down, that's a whole bunch every day. Uh, many of them victims to financial fraud. Well, to help seniors and other consumers protect themselves against such frauds and scams, Attorney General Cooper's office provides free educational presentations to community organizations. Now, Carol Young of the Attorney General's Office will be at the Peggy M. Seeger Senior Center April 19th. It's going to be a lot going Great. on that day. Yes, there um, is. That's a busy week. She, she will be there at 4 o'clock to share tips on how to avoid becoming a victim of scams. The program is free and open to the public. Pre-registration is not required. In fact, post-registration not required, nor is registration required. You just show up. Just, just be there. 4 o'clock April 19th at the Senior Center. Don't be scammed. No, don't. Tomorrow evening, also don't forget, is the bikeumentary that is free to the public taking place at the Paramount Theater at 7 o'clock p.m. 
It's a documentary that is hosted by Goldsboro Parks and Recreation. It says it's a pedal-driven bikeumentary. Never heard of one of those. Pedal-driven bikeumentary. Pedal-driven. Like mm -hmm. I like that. That's the name oh, of it. I like that. All right, let's see what else we have. We have a beginner jewelry class. How to make jewelry? Starting in April, the Senior Center offering a beginner jewelry class on Wednesday, 10 till 12. There is a $5 fee for each class. To, that pays for supplies. Right, right. But this is how to make it. Now, advanced registration is required, and the class is limited to only eight people. Eight people. Call Martha Merritt, and I have her number here. It's 734-4646. Jewelry group will continue at 1230 to 3 on Wednesdays. Jewelry group is an informal get-together of people who enjoy working on jewelry uh, and helping each other. So the class, beginner class, is from 10 until noon, mm -hmm. beginning in April. And you can call the... Uh, you can call Martha at 734-4646 to get information about that. Great. A lot of people do that. A lot of women yeah. do that, yeah. and then they sell it, you know, they, just like yeah. over at the art market. Yeah. You know, they do that there. And, of course, over at the Peggy Se Seegers Center, they also have that little gift shop there as well. They and sure do. And there's a lot of, of homemade and handmade jewelry by local people. That's exactly right. Um, Let's I see. heard you talking, I guess yesterday it was, about mm -hmm. the lobster and the shrimp. I can't wait. Yes, the lobsters are coming Ooh. to Goldsboro. They're coming in from Maine. I mean, they're coming, what, on a plane yeah. from Maine. <laughs> they really are. Maine, the, you mean the Maine plane? No, the they're plane, coming on the plane from Maine. On the plane from Maine, yes. which is the Maine plane from Maine. <laughs> they're very nice, very fresh lobsters. They're very friendly. They, I don't know how friendly they are, <laughs> but they come from Maine. And they are really literally taking out of the water on one day, and they are in Goldsboro the very next. Because it's cold in Maine, and they don't like that. Maybe not. You get the idea. Anyway. They, this they, is they, a fundraiser <laughs> that the Partnership for Children here in Wayne County does locally. This is, I believe, their ninth or 10th, I'm not sure which one, um, ev annual event. The funds go back to the partnership to basically support families of young children here in our community. And young children mean birth to age five. Right. And all these funds, like I said, they stay in our community, which is huge. Stays right here to support families and the needs they need to support their children and keep uh, their children prepared for kindergarten when they start. So if you'd like to take advantage, this is a win-win for everyone. Here. It really is. The it's only loser in this is the lobster. Or the shrimp. Or the shrimp. Two pounds of shrimp or a pound and a half of lobster, 25 bucks. That's right, for the ticket. 25 bucks for each one. Uh, for the ticket. And then you pick it up in May. You do. It's May 3rd. May 3rd. It's on okay. a Friday. It's Friday. always the very first Friday in the month of May every year. And you All can right. do it several different ways. You can have them cook it for you and just pick up your dinner on the way home. You can just drive through, pick it up, go on home, and you've got a wonderful meal. There or you, you can get it live oh, boy. and cook it yourself. Cook it yourself. Many oh, people boy. do that. You can right. even host a party and have multiple people purchase their tickets, and you can all get together and bring a side. Everybody can bring something and just make a big party out of it. But it's for a great cause. And, and, and great claws, as they like to say. Great claws. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> All right, that's going to wrap it up for yes, today. We'll be back again tomorrow morning at 7 o'clock. In the meantime, join us here uh, later in the day at noon, and then again at 5.30, and then again at uh, sometime during the evening. We'll be back <laughs> with you when the show repeats. Anyway, join us tomorrow morning at 7 o'clock. Until then, I'm Wayne Alley. And I'm Kim Best, and this is what's happening in your community.